the meeting to order. Today is Thursday, June 23rd, 2022, and this is the Budget Committee meeting. Uh, it is 7 o'clock in the Moose Hill Council Chambers, 268B Mammoth Road, Londonderry, New Hampshire. If you would all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We stand for a moment of silence, recognize those who served our country and those who continue to serve. Thank you. All right, uh, quickly go through the agenda items that we have here. So we public comment, there's no one here from the public, so there's not going to be a public comment. We have the minutes, and then we're gonna get into the committee business, which includes the budget briefing from uh, the school, and Peter and Lisa are here to discuss the budget. Um, I also had on there the master plan and feasibility study. Uh, just I was going since I attended that meeting I was going to go over but it's even better that if Peter and Lisa can talk about it that, that would help also and then enrollment numbers so it, I think it, <clears throat> all the topics that we have here all relate to uh, the school board and um, some of the questions that we submitted to you Peter and yeah, Lisa. We'll find a couple of 80% of them. I think you will. Yeah. Uh, then we'll get into the uh, lia liaison reports and uh, back to public comment. Probably skip that also, and then we'll talk about the meeting schedule going forward. Uh, so let's start off uh, with the minutes. Uh, so the minutes have been sent out to the committee members. Uh, any changes to the minutes? No changes? Do I have a motion to? So moved. Okay. I'll second. second. And second. All right. Thank you. All right, committee business, the budget briefing. I don't know, Peter, where you want to sit or? We have to vote. Oh, sorry, I have to vote. I have to vote. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All in favor of the uh, of approving the minutes as is? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Say no. Take the ayes out of it. Right. So, Before Peter, how did you, want, yeah, how did you want to start? Did you want to start? I said your number of questions. Did you want to start that with that, or just do you think? I mean, do you want me to go over the questions so that I mean, everyone here has seen the questions that we've submitted? Oh, so why don't, why don't, why don't, why don't you read, read, read the questions that you, okay. you submitted to us? Okay. Because, well, I mean, that, I guess then we, we pretty much had what we, you know, you kind of outlined what, we, what we're going to talk about anyway, so. Okay, all right. Um, so you want me to just? Yeah, just read them. And okay, then we'll, all right. Like one at a time and then we'll answer it, right? Okay. You want to so. do that? You guys want to do it that way? Go through oh, each yeah. question? Okay. But before we start, who, who's the trustee of trust funds here? I am. Okay, so you're, the answer we have for you is on the old, 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 old <laughs> trust. Yeah. Yes. Is, um, we weren't around then. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we, 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 we've given the task to our um, administrative assistant. Okay. So what she's going to do for the next several months is try to go through annual reports and minutes and many and try to find the um, the purpose of each trust the McKenney family in 1980 1965 five grand for football players or something right whatever so we're gonna she's gonna spend countless hours and I say that because if, if we can't find anything then technically we do have to go to court, and our, our attorney will do it all for us. But you're going to go to court, and you got to basically swear, not being funny, that you did your due diligence, that you looked up everywhere possible to find the purpose of the McKinney Fund or the Carroll Fund or whatever, mm -hmm. and you can't find anything because of the date, the time, or whatever. Um, and then the court would then ask the district, what you what do you want to what do you want to repurpose the money towards? Most likely, if we can't find it, we we would repurpose it to some kind of a family in need, either it's food or maybe books or something. That's that's how we'll, we'll repurpose it. Okay. So right? yeah, and through a through a through a scholarship type thing. So that's that's the process. Okay. What Peter's talking about is that when we had our uh, meeting of the trust fund, uh, the trustees of the trust fund mm -hmm. yesterday, um, we have a list, or um, Justin, is that his name? Yep. Uh, had a list of all the um, different trusts in the town. 
mm-hmm. and the obviously the largest one is is for the running of the cemeteries. Yep. Um, and then there were several small ones from the cemeteries. Um, you know, small amounts, five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, some of them were a couple hundred dollars. And uh, so we talked about trying to consolidate those into the cemetery fund because they were originally designated for uh, for flowers. Um, but we do that as a town anyway. We put flowers on mm-hmm. on the graves uh, periodically. Mm-hmm. And so we wanted to try and consolidate those if we can. And then there were several with the schools, uh, a couple of which are recent and are still active and, and are being used for what they were intended for. And, and several that were older that, you know, we're not doing anything with because we're not sure – the town isn't doing anything with them because we're not sure what we can do I with don't, them. They're so old. Wow. Nobody knows what they're for. <coughs> so One of them was 1915 wow. and 1940s. Hmm. So we Nobody f- knows what they are. They just say scholarship. And, and you, you can really use it for the purpose. So if you don't know the purpose, yeah. you really can't do a whole lot with it. Right. Well, so we don't want to just let that money sit there yeah. for the next 50 years and right. gain interest and not and not be able to do anything with it. So if we can, if we can figure out what it's for, then we could go back to using those. And those if we can't, we can... Correctly. We can just go to court and petition the Find court to, uses. Yeah. Right. you know, do it that way. But we'll do our due diligence to do the homework to see if we can't find some paperwork. But like I said, one of them was 1915 or 18 or something. Yeah, so exactly. I'm not optimistic we're going to find anything on that. But <laughs> some of them are, you know, not 40s and 60s maybe. Um, but we're going to try, and then um, that's all we can do. And if we can't find anything, we'll take all of the scholarship ones to um, the court and let them repurpose it. Okay. And we're not talking about huge amounts here. No, yeah, no, we're no, talking no. about, you know. A couple thousand here. We're One about I think was up. over 10,000, yeah. I we're think. About, we clean up, and if you use the money for, for, yeah. for a good cause, Correct. use the money for a good cause. No sense yep. to let it sit there. Yep. Awesome. Good. Thank you for looking into that. <clears throat> Thanks, Patrick. All right. Uh, first question was um, explain how to, the budget book is organized. It, it's the same question we've asked the town, sort of just understanding uh, your first 10 pages, what do they reflect? The core section of, of the budget book, and then the tail section of the bug of the budget yep. book. You want me to take this one? Or you want it? <coughs> oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, all right. The budget book is organized. The beginning is introductions and summaries. Um, then it's I have a different tab for every department. So every department's mm-hmm. budget is tabbed off. Um, the you know the I think it's in here in different formats. So depending on um, what you'd like to see it's in written format and paragraph form in the mm-hmm. summaries yep. um, if you so choose to see it that way i'm a numbers person i love spreadsheets i like numbers when we're talking budgets i want to see the numbers um but that's it, it's in both forms so whichever you know whichever way mm-hmm. um, the people want to see it it's there for them um, if you want to dive into the detail you go into the department sections um, there's itemized, every account has an itemization as to what's being budgeted under that line if you want to dive in. Mm-hmm. If you don't want to dive that deep, stick into the summaries, which is in the front part of the okay. book. Mm-hmm. Um, we have summaries by, what is it? Every, everything, function, yeah. object code. By object yep. code, which mm-hmm. which is, you know, I think your next question is, you know, what are, what did you say, what are your most important key pages yep. the ones people should review yes and i think we even say this at budget time all the time these yeah. two summary sheets it's the budget analysis by object um is it is i think a really good one we take the current budget and then we um show by object code which items went up so mm-hmm. it, it's a you can see where we were and which items went up okay or down and then the next one is the budget analysis by department. So you'll see each department, what the budget is, what it was last year, and the increase um, to that particular department. Okay. I think those, if somebody doesn't want to spend hours and hours in this book, those are probably two really great reports to look at. Um, I think the other one that I, I think is the most important is what we call the tax rate sheet. Okay. That report kind of lists out the revenues that we expect along with the uh, total budget. You're not going to get any detail there. Um, and then the um, outcoming tax rate based on those numbers. And the more inadequate. And it compares it to last year or in previous year's budgets. Um, it's got the warrant articles listed out in there. Um, that's a really important document, I think, to know. Okay. okay not only is our budget, budget 80-something million, but how will it impact the tax rate? Because we also have estimated revenues on there. So if I were going to pick out three, those would be the most important three. Good. Agreed? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important to read the superintendent's report yep. because there, hopefully, he 
uh, she outlines what the district is looking to change or what are the educational goals mm -hmm. um, that we're looking to do. And then if you, like, for example, I'm trying to think of something, um, one-on-one -on -one computers. Yep. So you see, you read that he wants to, we want, we want to now do the, um, the incoming sophomore, let's say it's a new program, and then you see computer equipment up, whatever. Wait a minute, the superintendent mentioned something about a new mm -hmm. program. I see. So it kind of ticked you off, like, yep. wait a minute, is that, is, the, is that for the new, yes, oh, okay. Okay. So the, so the budget, in my opinion, is the documents from either myself, superintendent, or principals. And the numbers say, how are you gonna fund the goal, the objectives of the high school, mm -hmm. middle school, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, in the old days when I was here, many, 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 it was simply line item budget. There was no talk about what you wanna do, what you're trying to accomplish. You're getting rid of blue trucks and you wanna add red trucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. There was just simply, okay, your supplies up $25. Why? Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Let's look at what, what, what the district is trying to achieve change, improve, new, and what we're deleting. Mm -hmm. And then from there, when you read the numbers, it should spark, wait a minute, equipment, IT. I wonder if that ties to the, this new one-in-one -one thing that he's talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I think. And, and if you stick with that, and like she said, the, the, the um, budget analysis, um, that should give you at least what, what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yep. No, it's good. And from there, from the budget analysis, if you look at it and it says, um, I'm trying to think of equipment up uh, 800,000. Okay. You're going to go, what's equipment going up 800,000 for? Now you go into the detail mm -hmm. of high school and middle school and find the equipment lines and say, oh, high school. That must be the IT equipment, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go into the details unless something in the summary accounts are high enough that, mm -hmm. that triggers you a flag. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every principal, every department does this summary that Peter's talking about. So the superintendent does his summary. Peter does a financial summary. Um, and then Lisa every, does a financial summary. I, yeah. And then every department there, thereafter mm -hmm. does a summary. So every department, you'll see okay. their summary, you'll see their <coughs> budget reports. Mm -hmm. right. So, it, you know, I, I think it's there for whatever you want to get <coughs> out of it. Mm -hmm. And we always highlight those summaries at budget um, meetings because... Um, we show you what page they're on because mm -hmm. I, I think we do believe that for the the common person who just kind of wants to know something, mm -hmm. those are the those are the yeah. those are the ones to look at. Um, right. You got questions on there? You're like, hmm. Dive deeper. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. Yeah. That's that's and that's I the best information. And I'm not, to I'm not start. bragging, and I mean this. I mean this. But we get we get people calling us about our budget book. So mm -hmm. someone says, you know, you don't provide enough information. We we we, we look we'll look at each other like, are you kidding? So we'll call Bedford. Yeah, I don't I don't think half the stuff you do. Mm -hmm. well, why? You know, do you, do you really think they? What do you, what do you do? What do they do with all that? We we give it to them. Yeah, yeah. So we do try to give you, you as a budget committee or a, a, a board, you know, the school board, a taxpayer, some idea of what is what's being asked and mm -hmm. and, and, and why. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, need, you need to know why. The budget's going up 800000 Why? Where, yep. You know, you know, why? And if there's a good reason, then there's a good reason. If there's not a good reason, then, then you're going to challenge it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, again, the reasons are those, those two questions is basically for the budget committee here. Yep. Uh, we've got yep. some new members, yep. uh, and I think it's important that all of us, if, if we tackle it this way, look at it, we come to the meetings more effective, have the right questions, and we probably already answer some of the questions that we're Absolutely. about to ask. So and, and we give it's you more for the being new consistent people yeah. around Thanksgiving. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Some of us want to give it to you after Thanksgiving, but <laughs> last year the board wanted it before Thanksgiving. <laughs> So what I would say, because I'm, I'm helping her out or staying on, yeah. if you see something that you don't understand, just email us or yeah. call us. Yeah. We'd rather have you email, call us, Zoom, you know, we've done Zoom with Jen. Rather do that, I'll, not what I use word, private, but just with you and then help you out. Then ask us in public, and we got to get back to you because we didn't, you know, we, we know, we know most of the numbers, you know, we don't know all of them. And our financial system is is really good in the sense for reporting. So if there's something that somebody's not seeing that they would like, 
just ask mm -hmm. and chances are I can pull it out very easily. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's probably can't unless you're getting into some, you know, very detailed things. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's ever anything, I can sort this information by functions, by objects, by, I have to report it to the state in different ways. So um, the capability is probably there for whatever you want to see. Okay. So just ask. All right, good. All right, uh, next question was the current state of the budget versus actual for 2021-2022 uh, school year. Quick overview. Yeah, I mean, so what do, you, what do you think? We're, the expenditure, yeah. when you say budget, you're really talking yep. expenditure. But, mm -hmm. but when, we, when we talk, we talk the whole general fund. So the whole general fund should probably come about 700 to the to a, for a surplus. That's a little bit lower than when I did a third quarter. There were a couple things that have come in, like um, Kim asked for the AEP, right? AED. Defibrillators. Defibrillators, which were 30,000. You know, just came up a little while ago. Um, subs, good news and bad news. The sub account is coming higher than I than I than we thought. The good news is subs are coming back to the schools. I don't know what, which 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 side you want. Mm -hmm. You know, it, in the old, remember the last few years with COVID, we weren't getting subs at all, and the sub line was re, was returning two three hundred thousand dollars, right? Which is great, budget wise, but that means we got administrators and everybody else covering open classrooms uh, because we, we couldn't get subs. Mm -hmm. Now this year you started to see the subs come back. And when I did the third quarter financial, I gave you a copy, yep. that expense is coming in a little bit higher than, than I, I projected. And that's a product of paying our subs more, which Correct. the board had voted for. Yep. And also still being in COVID, there was still a lot of COVID protocols and, and absenteeism. So our subline is, is right. and highest than I think it's ever been. And the us. revenues are still gonna come about 100 and. 10 yeah. above, which is which is good. So the increase in general fund balance, 700,000 in that range. No, well, okay, but we yes. have 600,000 that has already been allocated to capital reserves. Okay. So there mm. will be... The net increase will be about one 150. Give or take, yeah, yep. give or take. That's, we're closing stuff up now, but... Okay. So remember, we're starting with a balance, a fund balance of 1.25. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we might go back to that and ask questions, some uh, other questions, okay. Uh, update on your position, Peter. <laughs> that would be me. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. And that is effective? 7-1. Seven 7-1. One. Seven one. And Peter is staying on. Um, to, to do some um, outside counsel. So we'll be, I'm sure, in touch. Telephone, um, I think, yeah, counseling. Um, yeah, yeah, consulting. Consulting, consulting that's yep. the word I was looking for. Yep. Um, right. So yeah, it's it's me, Peter's gonna be consulting um, via phone, He's, he'll be up in North Conway, so um, he'll come in here and there when we need him. Yep. He'll okay. be there for whatever. Mainly be, be a good resource. Mainly overseeing food service, B and G, Mm -hmm. Transportation. So, take those. I use I use the phrase auxiliary services off her plate because they're not really they they have budget implications, but they're not finance and they're not management. They're not accounting. Mm -hmm. And then we're working together. You know, we're, we're always we, well. We work together anyways. But you know, whenever there's a, in, a finance impact, we'll you know, obviously she'll mm -hmm. she'll be right in there. But take that stuff off so she can focus more on the finance, the management, budgeting. Obviously, takes more time. And but now for her. For, for me, you know, my old days, the summer is medium. I'm planning opening of schools and whatever. Mm -hmm. She's closing one year and trying to open one year and get ready for the audit. So this is her busy time. Yeah. yeah. Right? So if I can take transportation, which rears its ugly head in the summer, off her plate, mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing. I see. Okay. And then we'll probably be looking to post my position probably in the fall. Um, okay. I was just, just going to ask that. Okay. Get through a lot of changes and just taking this one day at a time here. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the next question: What process improvements have been implemented, and where did we discover some expense savings? So again, this was something that uh, we spoke with Justin too about the budget book. Is there any way uh, when when the presentations take place for budgets? You know, is there any way they can summarize and say people can just say? This is what we've done so far. This is what we've discovered. We've implemented these changes. We've uh, found some savings here. 
sort of just kick it off. That's how they kick off their, their budgets and talk about it, just so we understand, so that it sort of gets, it sets, it sets the guidelines for showing that we're trying to like save. That. I think if you read their executive summaries, that's always They're going to point that out? It's been a directive of theirs to try to okay. point out cost okay. savings and areas that they were able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we can certainly try to highlight that with them to, to make sure yes, it's in Yes, that would be great. I think yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, but if not, to, to make sure it's in their presentation and they can mm -hmm. speak to it. Um, I know special ed certainly does um, talk speak that number a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I think each department um, will we'll give them some direction to um, I mean, highlight I those. mean, keep in mind, right, the budget's like 80, 83 million, right? Mm -hmm. If you took all the discretionary money of the buildings, what are we talking, two million total, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Because don't forget, they don't have in their budget, they yeah. don't have personnel and benefits, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So remember that sheet we give you. Um, we call it. They still will call it the Todd Jonker sheet because he 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 asked me to do it. We do that sheet that says, okay, here's what it really costs to run the high school. So we bring in the personnel. We bring in, in you know, the benefits that are tied to the personnel. We bring in indirect costs to the high school. And we say, okay, when you get the high school budget, right, uh, let's say it's um, $500,000. Mm -hmm. Here's what it really costs to run the high school. When you bring in the personnel and the benefits associated with the personnel, the sped costs and all that, that's when we say the real cost of the high school is, you know, $24 million. Mm -hmm. So that sheet does help because then you get a feel for what it really costs to run the high school, middle, moose, north, south, yeah. whatever. Because when they do their budgets, I mean, we're, north school, lot, right? we're, we're, we're talking $300,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. We save money on postage so, by going green. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Tried, so we save 50 bucks. You get a price on the copy paper. You know, yeah. it's, it's it, it, you say that, but it, it creates the mindset, though. That's what they're thinking. Right. I, know. I, I agree. Creates, no, I, right? I agree That's with the thing. I, saying, it we creates, want, I think if we highlight it more that, exactly. you know, I say that like that, but you're right. Yeah. It's it's being done, exactly. but we don't necessarily always say it. Maybe, so, maybe yeah. not, maybe it's not the money, it's the, the, process the process or the idea that you implemented something to do something. Exactly. Even if it saves a buck, it could have ripple you, effects. You changed yeah. a, a procedure. Right. And even if it's the people know that it is in the mind of these yeah. department heads, then they are always looking for Correct. Yep. cost savings, and it doesn't always maybe get. Um, mm -hmm. Told, it's spoken about. So yeah, yeah, we yeah. can definitely. Is there, it, like I said on, on my question, is there anything you can think of that uh, you've identified in, in terms of major process improvements that have changed? Well, in the I past mean, year, I, we already we just implemented um, you know the, the process of converting all the all the bulbs if you want to call them bulbs yeah. lighting whatever to LED over over the summer. Mm -hmm. That'll have some significant savings. Right. Um, you know. That's that that's one and and yep. and. I mean, the, so some of the big costs, you know, like I think somebody mentioned what I can't remember who was. Uh, what 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 are these two stipends for the energy managers? And and that's what Chuck and Bob Lee's do um, is they make sure that the lights are out in the weekend and the heat turned down and all yeah. simple stuff. But they're also looking at reports to say, okay, why is the high school running at um, five hundred terms a square foot? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Should be like two hundred. What, Correct. What, what's what's going on? Yeah. Oh crap. The, the, whatever. You know, the, the whole insulation and the gym got blown mm -hmm. out or something. Okay. Yeah. So from that report, you go and fix. Yeah. So that, so that energy management program. And they attend conferences and they educate themselves on ways to yep. save energy, and that's what they implement. So, um, you know, that you get the LED. I I know we're going to be looking forward. For, Maybe at the next budget, I don't know where we'll have to determine, but there's HVAC renovations mm -hmm. um, that we need to spend some money on. But again, it's going to have some energy payback. Um, but I think these guys are always looking at those places to look for to yeah. save money. Okay. Um, I think it came up today, you know, our utility. We were getting some questions on utilities. There's That's been of some course. Yeah. Uh, talk yeah. about utilities going up and yeah. by 40 something percent. We have a rate lock. On our electricity rate and our um, gas rate, our yeah. natural how long? gas Do you know how long? through 2026. Okay. So I think we're in a good position. We're positioned well for what might happen in the volatility of those things. Um, you know, that's the kind of thing that the yeah. energy guys. Yeah. You know, it's money well spent, and they spend a lot of time doing this. You might not think, mm. oh, energy man, what they turning off lights? Yeah. They're doing so much more than that. Yeah. They really are. I mean, I, I got to say, it, it's hard to, to push the building principles. To, to your question, what procedures can you make to save money? 
And I'm not saying they're out not to save money, but they're running around with student discipline, open classrooms, um, making sure the teachers are doing what they're doing. That by the end of the day, they're like, they're, they're, they're spent. So yeah. we work with them. So it's from us to them that mm -hmm. we work with them to maybe change a process. Yeah. But to, to ask Jason Parent, so what process have you done to change, save money at the high school? He's like, I've got yeah. kids. I, I, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that, but uh, no, I'm just you yeah, know. it would be more of find find someone. Yeah. Who that that's their goal. That's what that, this is. There's a small group of, of individuals that this is what we do. Hey, we go around talk to different groups. What can you do? What do you think can change? And, and that's so, really us. Yeah, it's when you start talking to people, you find out. Hey, well, well, if we change this process, we could save some money. Okay, yeah. I'll put that on the list. Look at it. And then decide we, which we, one you want. We have a out. wellness program that the HR department runs and runs well, and and you know the whole mm -hmm. the whole theory of that is you know you people take better care of their health. They get exams. You exactly. Catch, you yep. catch illnesses earlier, and it saves yep. you in, in the health care cost. Yep. Yep. Um, so you know it's those kind of things that we we yeah. do. Um, you know maybe we just don't highlight yeah. what we do yeah. well enough. I think so. that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now we get into enrollments. What are we expecting for a trend over the next five in, enrollments over the next five years? I mean, that's I, I would I, say a, a modest increase. Okay. Don't look for anything. I think after five, I think you're going to start seeing some increases, but um, it's going to be steady or just you know, 25, 30 more kids. <clears throat> and, and just to highlight, you know, you know, you've been here a while. You've been here a while. You've been a while. You get 50 kids at, at Matthew Thornton and, and you spread them out over over the five grades, there's no, no impact yeah. virtually at all. Yeah. Take those 50 kids and put them all in third grade, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's happened one or two times. Mm -hmm. I think at one point, maybe a couple of years ago, right, mm -hmm. South School, for some reason, ended up with like 100 kids oh, more in third it. grade. Mm -hmm. And we had to hire like three third grade teachers just because everybody... Every, every, everybody who moved into South School was a third grader. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, for us, that was the year where she wasn't sleeping in May because we, we were counting pennies mm. on, you know, getting to the budget. Mm -hmm. So enrollment, you know, 50 kids or whatever, spread out over six buildings. Yeah. Nothing, yeah. Um, enrollment did decrease recently from prior year. I don't remember if it went up or down. I think yeah, I, I don't down. know if it. I, I thought it stayed the same or went up or yeah. went up. Um, I can't remember. Do we have? Do you have some type of like a modeling tool that you use? You look at if we've got this much, you know, so many people moving into the town, we expect this percentage of people. There is a process for that. I'm not. Involved yeah, there in is. That like, the there, there is, but it, it, it's it's really hard to. Still a guess. Oh, I, I agree because uh, I think we're in a number and, of surprises. And the guess is kindergarten. Yeah. Well, let's face it. Yeah, it's guess, gonna, you know, kindergarten. Once you get into kindergarten. Exactly. You, you almost promote them, and and you and there's some kids that are still in private kindergartens that will go to first grade. So you can take 1.1 percent of kindergarten and move them into the into mm -hmm. the elementaries. And there is a process. I I don't know the superintendent does that, so I don't. I okay. Don't, I don't have yeah. the details so, on that, but there is a process. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll stop it's, right it's here. Not, it's not a, it's not science. Okay. All right. Let's stop right here. As you guys have questions and I yeah. I was going to ask this when we talked briefly about the facilities study, and I know the town is currently without a town planner, but, and I don't know what process the superintendent uses, but this is what planners do. They project out population, town growth, so maybe there's some collaboration to be had there with the town I, planning department. Well, we do know, for Believe example, like a, like a four-bedroom, and again, I don't know the numbers, so I'm just kind of making it up. A four-bedroom, on average, has 2.5 kids. And a three-bedroom has 1.75 kids, and a, two, and a two-bedroom condo has 0.9 and whatever. So those are what we what we use. The problem is we don't know that Steve just moved out with his wife, mm -hmm. and Lisa McKenney bought his house mm -hmm. with four kids. Yeah. You know, we don't know that transaction occurred. But I, I do believe he. There was some convers com some conversation with the planning department, isn't there, when he calculates that up? Yeah, for for, for new for new um, construction, but not he leaves and transactions. You, bought, right. you buy but, his house. But when, to your when, point, I so I there is some of that for new growth, yep. but not not transient, not 
you move out, she moves into your house with four kids. We don't, we don't know that until they show up and register. Yep. Still is a guess, but yeah, yeah, there's a process, but it's still a guess. Well, if you just measure who's coming in into the town and measure who's going out of town, I don't know if you can further find that out, but not sure. Not this. I mean, that's what's no, that, that, to get that, to your that's point. A big driver. Because th for someone who's already an existing resident moving to another house doesn't it doesn't wouldn't change anything. Right. It's more coming in, and leaving. Right. right. She she's coming in for mass and you're leaving. Correct. Correct. Right. The only thing that yeah. changes, we, we, believe it or not, I don't know what happened that that same year. People were moving from the north end of town to south end. You say you say no big deal, but that they loaded up the third they loaded grade. The, that I one see a point. They, they loaded up the different. Line. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, Tim? I just noticed that when I was looking at these trends, I went back and looked at a couple years too. First grade was like 70 lower than second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and all that good stuff. And here we are a couple years later, and I noticed that it's like 246, 256, 257, 322, 317. So it's like first, second, and third. It's like, well, actually, it is kindergarten, first and second. It's almost 70 kids less than like third on up. So it's like that one year, it's like we dropped 70 kids on average or something like that. Okay. And it seems to be following that way every year. We're just coming in with 250. When most people move in, is it a kind of like spread through the whole grades? Or do you see like usually we get more high schoolers? It's different. That's it's, the problem. You never know when the year comes <laughs> we in. We just don't know. Because this, this 70 kid less, it seems to be maintaining itself. From first grade to second grade to third the grade. Thing, the only thing I can think of is as property values are, are really going up higher than. Don't forget, we were always lower than mass, right? So you so you you and your family had a better chance of getting a decent home in Londonderry versus the same square footage in mass. Mm -hmm. and I think now we've caught up, or maybe just not as you know, the gap is closed. Mm -hmm. So now I think what you're seeing is maybe people moving in when they got the third grader and the fourth grader, not the kindergarten and the first grader. Yeah, two houses just sold on my street. Families moved out with kids. Family are people that moved in and no kids. kids. Mm -hmm. right. So We're seeing the that. house is a hundred thousand dollars more than it was. We're when seeing that he moved in. Yeah. So I'm wondering if this three hundred and twenty that we're averaging in the kindergarten, first and second, it's more like two fifty. If that's going to be the trend, where it just keeps going up through the high school at like 250 instead of, and then we have that many. I think you're in. going to see a 250, 275 class. Right, because I know the seventh graders they're like three, three something. They were like the huge group or whatever. That's now the ninth, tenth grade or something. So, yeah. So it actually looks like our we're going to drop overall as that keeps moving up through the high school. The kindergarten this year was full. I thought. Kindergarten, it's got a list here of 263 the previous year, 246 this year. Right. They went down 17. Yep. Well, you don't know what next, you don't know what this year is. Yeah. This year, well, I mean, you're on talking the current year. Last year and the year before. Yeah. So, yeah. So. I, th I think but. they're still registering, so we still yeah. don't have data on that yet. And, and just to let everybody know, believe it or not, we'll, we'll, we'll get 50 kids registering for kindergarten. August. After home, old home days, yep. we don't know what happened. We, we don't try, know what they're doing. We try to get them in, but but, but they'll come in. Like there was one year, we got fifty kids the week the week before school opened. Well. I don't know. What they, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. But. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? If so, nothing else. Okay. Um, the next uh, next question is: the master plan outlines general plans for revamping sections of the schools and adding more space to the schools. Would the need for more space in the high school still be a factor if the hooks at students were not part of the enrollment numbers? No. Well, wait a <laughs> no or yes? No. The, 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 the hooks at students will have no, no impact on, on, the, on, the, on the planned space for the high school. We would not be building space due to hooks at. They only take space that's available. Right. But we're expanding. <clears throat> We need more space. So, okay, so, so so to your point, then, if if at some point we are renovating um, or expanding the the, the, the high school, mm -hmm. correct? I we we're looking at 
what what editing we use the word editing the um, MOU for Hudson mm-hmm. that that's got to get done October November type yeah. thing, thing before that probably September so it it wouldn't impact the sp- we wouldn't we wouldn't adjust the space of the school district to accommodate the hooks of students. Okay? But to your point of financing, the discussion has to be should is the should hooks it beyond the hook, you can say that, but mm-hmm. hooks it beyond the hook for for a share of construction costs yep. coming to the school. And that answer I, I believe would be yes. The question is how how and how it's constructed. Yeah. So we wouldn't we wouldn't add a thousand square feet because of hooks of kids. Okay. We would build it for Correct. what we need. But if hooks it's con- continuing and we're spending a buck for construction and renovation, mm-hmm. hooks it should be in the hook for some share yeah. of that construction renovation cost. And I'm sorry I didn't drop how much of these I see that there's improvement plans for basically each of the schools. Yes. Mainly related to age. Um, is that, but this, this conversation seems to be about expansion for space. Are we, are we looking at doing this, this, and this is a lot of work here. Um, obviously it has to be done over a long period of time, but are we looking at these changes, these projects uh, for refurbishing Older buildings and bringing them up to where they should be. Yes. Or are we looking at expansion, or are we looking at both? All three. Both. Actually, there's all three. I'll, not, I'll tell you why in a minute. Mm-hmm. I'll, get, I'll get to you in a minute. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what he's talking about yeah. is if we're going to spend construction money for the high school. Right now, the hooks of kids pay for education. Should the hooks of kids or, or district be on the hook for a share? Of construction costs if they're going to be entering a refurbished building, correct? Yes. And the answer yeah. I would think is yes. And there's formulas that that we can use for tuition. that. So basically, thus far, the hooks and kids have been a, a a boon for us. We make money on them, uh, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> and sorry. And uh, we want to see that continue, but we want to take into account some of that expansion. Well, no. Again, I'm not. I'm, we're not gonna. We're not gonna expand the footprint of the building for them. But if they're gonna, if they're gonna move in, if they're gonna, if if you could do it like this, right? So next August, they're walking into a brand new L, brand new high school. There should be some construction costs above and beyond the tuition fee that they should share in the construction of their kids now getting taught in a refurbished mm-hmm. school. Is there a way to roll that into the tuition fee yes. on a regular basis to yep. help plan ahead for those projects? Yep. I think it would be rolled into the tuition rate. Yep. I think once they it, would ever agree to. I think once the, I think what it is, you have to wait for the bond to, to to be passed, and then that can be rolled in. Okay. Yep. Kind of what Patrick brought up is kind of what I was thinking too. We have. We we talk about space for students, then we talk about refurbing like. There's a big portion of the high school that's made out of two by fours and wood. Perfect mm-hmm. fire hazard, mm-hmm. especially as dry as it is and old as it is. Mm-hmm. So it's not even up to code anymore if it's got to be steel, things in fire resistant stuff. So do we see the priority as maybe that refurbishing the building and fixing the old stuff as more of a priority than making space for kids? Because for the kids, we just need to, if we're going to, tear out the old wood stuff, we can redesign the building such that maybe it gives them some space they need without, especially when we see like kindergarten, first and second grade be on average 70 students less a class. If that's gonna come up through there, how do we justify needing space in the long term? We might need it in the short term because when I look here, the numbers kind of go up a little as, as right. middle school comes up. Okay, so no, we'll, we'll get into the facility management now. Uh, Is that all right? Um, just one, I guess one more. I have one more question. I think I, and it's not on there. It's just directed to you, Peter. Oh, there's an ad hoc question. There's an ad hoc. <laughs> um, since you're retiring, I'm wondering what advice do you have for the budget committee? My advice to the budget committee is to look at the, the goals that the district wants to achieve, wants to do, and then challenge those, those goals. 
Okay. And then from the goals, you can determine whether it's worth the money or not. And a, and a perfect example is, right, full day kindergarten. Okay? Let the superintendent or the school board should lay out to, to you, or uh, everybody, but to you, what they believe is the value in the, in the student ed education what from, from, from kindergarten to, to 12. What improvement? How, how, how is that going to improve me when I graduate, you know, from, from whatever? Mm -hmm. um, I know there's research, because my kid does research. I know there's research that says that you can almost tell the value, not the value, I hate the word value, the, 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 what a kid, the intelligence of a kid at third grade. Third mm -hmm. grade. The third grade test is a great predictor of what he or she is going to look like come graduation and beyond. I don't know why, but there's tons of research that show that. So if that's true, and you can double the amount of kindergarten time, does that not help the third grade tests, which then say, I'm graduating here instead of here, mm -hmm. and what is the cost of that? So okay. that, to me, is what the budget committee should be looking at. What, 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 what goal you want to do, what educational program you want to do, and what is, what is the cost, and then is the cost worth the, the end result that, that you're predicting? Yep. You know, and, and always look at ways of saving money, but, but that's you know, where I think you, you, we, 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 we need to look at. Okay. Right, and the, right, the perfect example is in order to get full day kindergarten, you got to have expansion, you got to do this. Is that money worth all this? Or, and are there other ways to achieve? Maybe not, maybe not here, but maybe here. Correct. Yeah. Then go into full day kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I ask him a question on that? Yeah. Um, I've had this discussion before with people, um, and I'm just wondering where you stand on this subject matter. Of, like, people will say, why doesn't this school board or superintendent come in and just, um, I'm going to exaggerate for people to understand, and cut $10 million off the school budget? You know, we can't afford it. It's too much for everybody to lower our taxes. They can just come in and cut that money. And then I've explained to some people that, and I don't know who it is, but there are certain people that when they come up with a budget, the budget is not necessarily to save a ton of money. It's it's a budget needed to pay for the schools and keep them from falling apart, teach the kids with an education that is expected and that's been set forth to set, you know, like the superintendent's budget or whatever. Yeah. His job is not necessarily to cut $10 million. His job is to make sure the kids are taught, the buildings are taken care of, the grounds are kept of, the buses run, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Do you see it as, who's, who's responsibly do you see it as to like cut the budget back if it needs to be cut back really bad and whose responsibility is to make sure, like, I always think the superintendent, it's his responsibility to make sure the budget, the numbers don't matter as much as accomplishing what he's supposed to do with his goals set by the budget committee, I mean by the school board committee, but the school board has the ability to say we got to cut costs, but then... When, when we build a budget, if I'm wrong, you can yell at me, we build a budget based on what we believe is the expectations of the parents of the community. You want a robust school district with options for kids to choose. Rule one, there is no there is enough there is enough money in this world to give every kid, you know, the the best education possible. There's not enough money in the world. We all know that. But but what level of options and service and education both in the classroom and on the field and, and others do you want the com the, what the community wants to provide? That's the budget we, we do. Mm -hmm. So we look at class size, right? We say, no, we're not going to have first grade at 30 kids. The community, to our knowledge, doesn't want 30 kids anymore in first grade. That's how we build a budget. So we build it based on what we believe the expectations are from the parents. And I say parents. I know it's everybody, but mm -hmm. the parents are the ones that send their kids to us. To, and... To me, it's the school board to say, we're not going in with a budget that high. We, you, we, we need your help to get this from 83 million to 80 million. And if you're gonna cut the budget, 
my idea would be tell them where you want. I don't need um, um, whatever. I don't need five vocational schools, classes. And you send them, if you send the vocational schools to the vocational center, do they get the same education? Probably. Does it save money? Yeah, I think so. Then why don't we do that? Instead of just saying, cut five million. Because I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, cut five million, we can do that one hour. Nobody's going to like it. Yeah. One hour, I can yeah. cut 10 million. Mm -hmm. No one's going to like it. Because... Mm -hmm. You know, at class max size, you're you're probably cutting co-curricular, yep. athletics, mm -hmm. all the things the community expects. So when you're talking those kind of cuts, it's the only place you can go. We're 80 percent people. I mean, perfect so example, programs. right? Was it what? No, two years ago. Me, okay. Those who know me know I'm Mr. Athletics, right? I played mm -hmm. hockey. My kids went. My kids played sports. Her kids played sports. She sh was shocked when I said. Let's get rid of the M teams. Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember that. Oh, four yep. teams? Yep. And what happened? Mm. They got put back in? Yep. We, 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 we went to Howard. Howard. Can we get? Yes. You know what? Yes. <laughs> almost. Almost. Please. Yeah. Because I, I'm, 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 I'm killing myself finding coaches at the M teams. Nope. They went back in. The M teams, just so you know, this is why I'm here, because the history is when the sixth grade went to the middle school, there was a big, like, the sixth graders are going to get crushed. So in order to give them a chance of athletics, right, you have the, the L team, so the varsity. So L team's varsity, the M team's a junior varsity for the middle school. So even though, so the sixth grader who, who is okay, Right, still like soccer, but is it going to make? If you didn't have it, is it going to play the L team? They have to just go to rec. So we wanted them to play on a school team. So we created the M teams, and they play like the smaller schools in the area. So they they still play for the middle school. They're the, the M team. So there was a cry where no, we're not that desperate yet. That that's a good example of what we're talking about. Mm. It seems that nobody wants to give up any programs when they talk those large cuts. Well, and when you talk right. a large cut, yeah. you've got to be realistic about it. So if you're telling us to cut $3 million, you've got to be willing to either accept higher class size or reduce. Mm -hmm. you know, and we could always talk about what those cuts would be, but something's got to give. You're not going to cut three, four, five million dollars $5 million, $2 million. You want to go or you want me to go? Without, no, I just want to say something. something. I don't want to get into this because this really goes back to, like, the – hours that we're going to spend during budget. Mm. But I think there's something to be said for, you know, you guys made the point where you set the budget for what the community wants, which is great. I just don't think at that superintendent level, we've had that for the last five years from that position, taking that budget and actually following through with it. I think once you have that direction at that level, that your that ideology will stick. I don't get it. I'm lost. I just don't think that Scott in his position did what he was supposed to do with the budget. As far as education, security, so on and so on. Well, okay, now we know talk about it, it, let's let's be fair that the last two years yeah. was Oh, yeah, I understand, was, but was, he was, wasn't just here for the last two years either. Right. But like I, I said, I'm I not going to... I think we made some... I, I think we made some great strides. Not... We could have done better. Um, I would never... I would never say we, we could have done better, but, but I thought we did some... Getting one-to-one -one computers was, was a big sell. A huge yeah, sell. Yeah, I, I understand that part of it, like as far as the material aspects of it. I'm talking about, like, learning, education... With what our budget is at eighty-three or seven million dollars, we should do a lot with that. Like we could do a lot with that, and I think that you guys are headed in the right direction. I just don't think that at that level, that it was necessarily. Maybe it was an oversight. Or are, you, are you talking test scores? Everything. If you're talking, if you're talking about our test scores. Test scores, security, mm. everything. Well, security, we're we're, we're pretty good. 
Yeah. Pretty good. I don't we 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 need we need to do some some things. Yeah. But test scores. You'll, you'll your test scores will never in Londonderry at least for a while. Never reflect the quality of the overall. Yes. It's one. Education. It's a data point. It's not. Jason had done a good presentation on that at a board meeting, well, probably like a month ago, addressing the test scores and how those test scores are incorporated, like where they drive, what data yeah. points are taken. Um, I thought he did a really good presentation, and I'm not going to try to. Um, yeah. No. I'm not trying. Going to try to go there. there but it was a good explanation. It's not. It's a data point. It's not. It's not everything. It, it, I think what what Jen's getting at too, though, it's a data point, but. It's looked at from yeah, I know. people does. look at certain data points when they make a yes. decision where are they going to move? Yes. Where am I going to send my kids? And just so you know, they're big data I, points. I don't, I don't yeah. lie and I don't hold things back. I, I, I've had conversations with Jason and, and, and I don't know if it's a Dan Black. And my question to him is Jason, I know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. and I, agree, I know what you're doing. I know why you're doing it. And I agree with it. But at some point, you've got to ask yourself how many times do you want to fight? The battle. Right. Mm -hmm. How many times you know Newsweek is going to yeah. use um, AP tests as one of the one of the criteria mm -hmm. for Londonderry being fifty or one? Why just why don't you just bite the bullet right. instead of fighting the fight every every year mm -hmm. and just make AP tests AP tests mm -hmm. required? The curriculum is not driven by a test by the test scores. Correct. And so, to Peter's point, like, do we need to factor in and change our curriculum what the, they believe is right to get a better test score? And the AP is is mm. part of that. We don't force the kids to take that AP test. We get dinged on that. That mm -hmm. brings your that yeah. brings your test scores down. Right. Um, so, you know, do we make and, them take it? Do we change that when they philosophically offer, don't um, believe it's honors better? and we offer the dual credit? Correct. That so I, I've been the one that bringing up the dual credit every time. Right, though, and so to your point, yeah. and I mean this, the dual credit and the honors, the minute she takes a dual credit, that lo that that's one student that's not taking the AP test. Mm -hmm. So you go from, I'm just making up numbers now, 50% of the high school taking the AP to 30 because 10% are taking honors, which doesn't count, mm -hmm. and the other 10 are at dual credit, which most of them would have been an AP, and you would have had 50% of your high school take an AP. Mm -hmm. So the question is, go back to options. What are the best options to, for, the, for the kids? And they would argue, honors. dual credit, honors, and AP, and, and, all let, the and, let, advantages and let them those, decide right. where the, where they want, what, what's best for them to move forward mm -hmm. in whatever direction. Right. And, and that decision is probably hurting mm -hmm. London Dairy's, um, whatever, Correct. and let's say Newsweek, where one of the major criteria is yep. scoring on the AP test. Yep. Yep. I mean, not, not for us. Right. My, if you read my little, if you watched my little speech the, the, the one night, I did, I did end with, in my opinion, I, I said this almost verbatim, in my opinion, the school board is the last defense for a kid to get a quality education. And they are the ones that need to decide what a quality education is, where they want to peg it, and defend it, and fund it. Mm -hmm. Because the kids don't have a vote. You do, mm -hmm. as a parent. But the kid, in first grade, doesn't have a vote on, on what they want for the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So the school board is, it ultimately should decide what they want, defend it, and budget it, and market it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're on the facilities now. Yeah. I, I, again, back, just back on, just to finish that off. Your point about um, us voting for it. The other situation I, I, I struggle with is that, as members of the budget committee, we're supposed to represent the entire, uh, all uh, residents in, yeah. in London area. Those who have kids, those have kids who don't, uh, those who don't have kids. Those who want zero budget, you know, we have to represent that and find that and what makes the most sense. And that's where I have difficulty is, is um, I was, it's, it, when you look at the Warren articles, it's, there's always that percentage and I'm always wondering where that 30% that votes against all these articles, 
Where is that population, and how do we get a hold of them? I'd well, love to find I'll that tell you out. One story. When I was in the town site, I had a woman call me, and she wanted um, an abatement on, on her taxes. I said, okay. I said, um, there's a process that I'll get to in a minute. Please tell me why you're looking for an abatement on your taxes. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I don't use the bus school bus. I drive my kids to school. Mm. So where am I giving you the baby? Well, I'm saving money. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not using a bus. My my kids. I drive my kids to school. I said, okay, ma'am. Before I give you the process, I'm gonna ask you one question. If I give you an abatement because you drive your kids to school, what do I do with the people who don't have any kids in school? Mm -hmm. What do I say to them? That's right. The bus still goes by her house, so, regardless of whether she takes it. Yeah, well, I was in the town, so I didn't know. I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> yeah, we still have the same bus and the same driver, yeah, and right. the same gas cost. That's right. Kind of like the buildings. The building still got to pay heat, got to pay exactly. gas, got to pay oil. And, and one and thing up to your point, not. one thing that that most of you get because you've been here, but most people don't understand, is there is not a one-to-one -one correlation between the student enrollment and the expense. Mm. Yes. We know, we know that the average cost of a high school kid is sixteen thousand dollars. We know yes, that. Yeah. That's just the average cost of a kid. That doesn't mean if she pulls her two kids out of high school, it costs thirty-two thousand dollars less to run the high school. That's right. And yeah. that's that's something you can all help with. Is that one-to-one -one correlation doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It it does not. Nope. I mean, it's the same with fire and police. We take out 20, 20 houses mm -hmm. at um, the north end of town to put a, put a field. I'm just making it up. Fire department budget didn't, didn't go down. Yeah. Yep. It's the same kind of concept. Yeah. Now, we call it the step, right? At some point, you exactly. can get rid of a, yep. you can get rid of a, a yep. teacher or two, mm -hmm. or you can add based on, you know. This. But, you know, when people want to say, well, you, know, you lost five kids, uh, yeah. that, that don't do anything to my budget. Does the school know how many, last question on this topic, does the school know how many students are required to drop? Let's say we lose 50 or 100 students. That's why I brought up the whole hooks right. of students. Uh, wh where is that, that step, uh, that uh, decision now? This, everything changes now. Now we have so many uh, well, fewer students. The elementary is easy, right? I mean, let's face it. All the kids stay in the one class. Yeah. So you take the elementaries by grade. We line them up, and we do we always we, we just let you know we always do the one minus one plus to see what what happens if we take a, a teacher out of third grade at Matthew Thorne mm -hmm. or north or south side. east west yeah. whatever. So that's easy, right? You take there's 84 kids in Matthew Thorne in third grade. There's five teachers. I'm just making it up. It comes to 22 kids. What happens if we go to four? Right. Mm -hmm. And is that an acceptable size? Right. That's, okay. that's yeah. what we do. It's the high school when you've got like 400 classes. Mm. Throughout the day, and they're, and they're scattered everywhere. Very different. Yeah. The only way you can do, and, and don't forget, the, the biggest problem is, you can say, let's get rid of an AP English class because there's only there's four kids, four kids, four kids, and five kids. So let's get rid of one of those. Okay, but Steve Bro teaches two regular English classes, one AP class, and another intermediate. If I get rid of that AP class, what, what am I doing? Yeah, not, I see your point. You know, or, I, or I can't get rid of that class because Steve, Steve teaches that AP English. He's also teaching some obscure, mm -hmm. high-level English class. If I get rid of him, i got to get rid of that class. I yeah. can't find anybody for him. Yeah, okay. So i so I, so I, I got to keep him because I, cause that class is popular. And why I'm, I might as well have them teach that class. So high school is the one yeah. very that is very, very complicated yeah. to so, so it's more, figure out. It's more looking at the classroom set, structure and setup and instead of just saying, let's if we wipe out, if we lose 100 students, what's the difference? It's yeah. more by classroom. Okay, all right, I'm good. Okay. All right, um, so the next topic was the uh, master planning and feasibility study. And, you, and Peter, you handed out, you provided us with copies. Again, I I'm not asking you to go through this uh, back in detail. I'll do it quickly. The gentleman asked, so we, yeah. we, we're prepared to do it quickly. Yeah, and, and um, if you look, I just want to let the group know. I, mean, I know they've seen it, but uh, halfway through, they um, it sort of gives some numbers of 
of what they're looking at in terms of for repairs. Um, yeah, I think every school is summarized. Every sc the school, yes. what the plans are, and a, and a you know a, a guesstimate. So, so this is a this is a conception. There, there has been nothing planned. We haven't. We're not going off a of bonding or, or anything, based on the current enrollment and the, oh, the the age of the buildings, the age of HVAC, the age of the power, the age of the pumps, the age of the whatever, the age of the roof, the age of the building, and don't forget they were they were all built like in 19 or whatever 50, 60, 70, whatever. Education was delivered like this. It's now delivered like this. So what you see is. What does what needs to be done in each building to optimize the the way education and instruction is delivered today, and address all the aging components of each of the buildings, the roof, the HVAC, the 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 um, all that. So, for example, South School. Okay, if you go to South School, the recommendation from the committee. This is not the architects. This is the you know mm -hmm. committee working is to demolish South School. Yeah, just demolish it. Those who've been around a while know we had portables yep. uh, that we that we that, that rotted out. We know we had remember we had mold that we had to like have an emergency construction because South School was built on the cheap. Period. <laughs> I can I I have I, I can prove it to you one hundred percent. The best part about South School is the roof was a, was a Scandinavian experiment to take advantage of the sun, right? If you go look at it, they call it a sawtooth roof. When they designed it, the school was going to be like this, right? This to this, this note south side, and the roof was built to absorb the sun and, you know, and help it heat. When they got to the construction point, it... The, the footprint had to be moved like this. And that's how they built it. If the sun didn't move, it's still over here. Okay? That, that tells you in a nutshell, South School. Yeah. And it gets back to, like, your, your car. I put five grand into the 10-year-old car, or do I just bite the bullet and just buy a new car? Mm -hmm. And the committee said, let's, let's blow up South and start over. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's one of the big ones. The high school is the other big one. Now, forget for a second that there is a acoustically sound, multi-purpose large room yeah. in there. Don't say the word. Don't say the word. It's a large, acoustically sound, multi-purpose room. And for those who don't know, the gym was never finished. Mm -hmm. The gym, if you look at the gym, on the left side is um, parking. parking lot. That was supposed to be part of the gym. It was supposed to be the gym, you know, the basketball court. It was all supposed to be a large, multi-purpose one, and the weight room and everything else was supposed to be. Have you ever been to Winter Cunnage Gym? Anybody? Yep. Winter Cunnage. That's our gym. That should be. That, Winter Cunnage asked us that we could use the plans we said yes, you know, from Frank Marinades. They built our gym. It was supposed to have an indoor track suspended, I don't know, 30 feet up. I'm yeah. Okay? We won't get the track, but we'll get the multi, you know, the extra room. So forget that for a second. Phase one, go down and walk down phase one. Phase one has a plywood foundation. The floor is plywood. The 100s. The 100s. Someday, maybe not tomorrow, not next week, someday somebody's going to run down that floor, that plywood is going to snap, and that foot's going to go down about two feet, and that kid's going to rip the leg right off, right, right off the hip. Because we run there. We, we, we run into a track in, in that area. That, that ha if, if you do anything else in, in, the, in the town of Londonderry, Phase one or one hundreds, whatever word you want to use, needs to get torn down and built correctly with a with a with a concrete concrete slab. foundation. We're, we're, we're just begging for a problem, and so 
part of that too is you remember a couple of years ago, Tony D was in, was the chairman of the auditorium committee. See, I said it yep. finally. Of the, of the auditorium committee, remember it had to be 10 feet away from the structure. That's fire code because of the wooden foundation on phase one. <laughs> that the, the high school footprint has reached its maximum level because of that yeah. um, wooden um, plywood uh, foundation. Mm -hmm. The others are strictly, let's say, cosmetic, adjusting to how instruction is delivered today and, and updating the rooms, the acoustics, the, the HVAC, the roof, you know, the mechanicals and all that. So you see, like, the elementaries are not really that bad, you know. Um, the high school's the high school's eighty million because of what you know. So the idea for the hundred one those one hundred wings is to just tear it down and build a new build a whole new wing. Yeah. I mean the message is, is our buildings are old, our schools are Correct. old. Um, I think even when you think about the new building, which was what the addition at middle school. Yeah. They pointed out it's forty something years old, but in a, that's yeah. the latest thing that we've done. So we always think, oh yeah, Most middle sales. school had a nice Most new sales addition. Twenty years. It's forty wow. something yeah. years old. Yep. So we're still finding asbestos in it. Seems like every time we turn around, we find asbestos. We got that last piece coming out, Matthew Thorne, ne done next done year. I'm sorry, not Moose Hill, Matthew High Thorne. schools, yeah. high schools, I think. And then, and then of course, the now. other piece is Moose Hill. Exactly. With yeah. the expansion of the, the LEAP program and whatever, um, you know, the idea is obviously twofold. I, take the portables out. You just, just build a $10 million addition to address enrollment needs with with leap or do you, do you do the full blown for full day k mm -hmm. and 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 the, the 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 problem with that is classrooms are cheap right they're they're a buck a foot or whatever mm -hmm. in order to go full day k all the core facilities got to come in Lunch. a gym correct yeah you know, or, or a multi-purpose room not a gym yeah. uh kitchen, kitchen yeah. the library and all that by by state law have to have all that mm -hmm. so you're only adding like Say ten classrooms, right? But you got to add all that core Correct. for the full day portion. Yep. So that's. I can leave you with some good news. If you go on the Concord patch, mm -hmm. Concord is um, planning a new middle school for the, for Concord School District. Care to guess what the, what the estimated cost of this school is? Anybody? One hundred eighty million. How much? One hundred eighty million. One seventy six. Great guess. So does that mean the numbers in, in this document are out of date? Um, I think they're out of date by by a little bit. We they did them about a year, you know a year ago. And they aren't quoted out. I mean they're just architectural right. guesses. I yeah. mean they, they're not. They don't have full blown plans. And I mean I don't know what's in the I I don't know what's in you know this this middle school that Concord one wants to build for all I know there could be three gyms and two pools, oh. but I'm just. But at, at some point, right, something has, if some point, in my opinion, if, if we do nothing else, address Moose Hill and address the 100s at the, um, at the high school. Yep. But where, where does South fall in that conversation? So if and, you were rating. maybe you're going to blow up South. Yep. So those are your top three, obviously. Any of those come ahead of the others? No, those are top three. You know, I don't know if you can do just the hundreds of the high school without, you know, the architects are going to say, well, but if I do the hundreds, I, got, I have to do a little bit of this and that to get to it. You know, so where, where, so where does it end? But if I, if I had to just pick three projects that London Derby should, should look at, look at would be South, the 100s. Um, what was the other one? Most. 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 Not, so, ne not necessarily in not the Not necessarily order. in order. Those are the yeah. three. And I, I don't know if I heard you correctly. Uh, Matthew Thornton, the oldest parts of the building, that's already getting repaired? Oh, yeah. That's already in the works. Okay. Well, in the works. Oh, no, no, no. With asbestos? With asbestos. What do you mean? It's all the asbestos. asbestos. Huh? Just the asbestos. Oh, just yeah. the asbestos removal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty much okay. I mean, we do, you know, if you look at um, one of the articles is like a six, seven hundred thousand dollars maintenance trust fund, whatever. And we, we that's, that's, that funds your, all your, real your HVACs, you know, your mechanicals, your roof, and your paving. So that that fund every year we're doing something on HVAC or mechanicals or roofing or you know so but um, not to the extent where you're 
going to modernize, right, your right. entire school district. Exactly. Um, I mean, Salem, I mean, I'm, you know, Salem bite bite butt, bit. bit the bullet, and did did a bond article for I think it was thought it was two hundred and sixty million, and and went one by one. So remember, Salem re re modernized their entire high school while high school was in session. <laughs> Took them three years. Three years. Ask any parent who had their kid in Salem, it was pure hell. Because there was construction and banging and whatever going on all the time. But they basically moved, had portables, and you went over there and fixed this section, then that section, and then the whatever. And just really, literally rebuilt a high school while it's still standing. Wow. And now they're on the other area. So they're going to have an entire modernized school district in about three more years. And they floated a bond, I think, at the, like three or four years ago for 260. And you'll also see in that report, they reported out like, you know, some of our mechanicals are at critical stages and each school is at, at different. But there, we have a lot of mechanicals that are at the point of failure mm -hmm. that we're gonna have to address probably yeah. long before um, these, these facility things are done. Yep. Um, so we'll start addressing that, and prioritize, and move that through the budget process. Okay, I'd like to, if, if we can, move maybe forward. another five minutes so yeah. we just close yeah, this up. Yeah. Do you think that um, town people actually fund a lot of the maintenance stuff? Do you think our building and grounds people are like so good that it's receptive to a lot of people? Because I hear a lot of people say, our schools look great, our schools look great. I mean, they don't see the HVAC and the walls and the floors right. and stuff like that, or the insulation and stuff. Right. But do you well, ever, do you ever think great. that the uh, these ground people are just so good sometimes at what they do that they actually it's deceptive kind of like to the public of what? Well, because yeah. all the big problems. numbers are the things you don't see. Right. It's the roofs. It's the mechanicals. The, that's mm. you're seeing a clean floor and, and carpeting mm. that's been you know maintained paint. properly. They see paint floors. The, the and everything big they, money is in the stuff they're not great. seeing. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, okay, so the the, the the gym, the the water tank, just let go. The water tank is so big, we're gonna. It has to. It has. It has to be taken out and put back in by a crane. And that. And that was two thousand two, right? Three. Mm -hmm. And that hot water tank is gone. Uh, it, it shut off, drained. So we, we got to get a crane to pull it out, and another, you know, and to drop it in. Maybe so, it's big enough to get it out of. <laughs> It's like huh? you're gonna cut a hole in the ceiling to get it. Yeah, I think so. Well, um, yeah, the, the furnace or boiler at, at middle school has to has to get done. It's on, mm -hmm. a, it's on, it's on like a critical list. Yep. So when you when we do the walkthroughs, they all look nice, and, and we're proud of that. But we don't we don't show you the the boiler. You know, we don't go in the boiler room. You we don't we don't take you up in the roof and show you the show the cracks. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you remember, we diverted money from the capital reserve fund. And buildings and grounds, we were going to finish phase two of the paving in front of the high school. High school. Yep. We we repurpose those funds to redo the roof and Matthew Thornton mm -hmm. uh, because of the um, the consultant said do that roof. Yep. Gonna make it. Yep. And also the asphalt cost had gone up and probably doubled. Probably wouldn't so have the we money to do it anyways, We didn't have the money to do it. But even if we had the money, they, we were like. They, they, the roofing guy says, Priorities. Well, it, it was leaking, right? Yeah. It leaked. Well, yeah, they fixed no. the leak, but it, it was, you know, there was other parts of the roof mm. that just needed, um, it was it was due to be re yeah. repaired, so replaced. Okay. Um, any other questions? So the, the master planning feasibility study, I think we covered that. The next section was enrollment numbers, but I think we covered that. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing uh, for this feasibility study for me is, again, it, it's enrollments. I'm still, at some point, if they could show us next five years, this is where we think enrollment's going to be. If they could, I think that would help for these discussions, so that people can understand. All right, is are the numbers going to go up or not? I think that would help. Again, so, and that's not your part. And, 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 that's and I mean not, this yeah. sincerely. It's not. It, it, these, this is a conceptual ideas of what mm -hmm. needs to get done. When we figure out when the board says we're doing Moose Hill, right? Now you get into the enrollment and how many classrooms you do really need to add and how many leap you really need to add and what size and, mm -hmm. and so now the number gets more concrete correct 
than what, what's on there now. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the elementary and north, south, east, and west. Conceptually, based on enrollment today, based on DOE code and all that, mm -hmm. this is what you need. If we're, we're projecting enrollment going down, then those 10, that 30,000 square feet that's been projected to add to north becomes 20. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because and a lot of what we forward. have is undersized. It's mm -hmm. undersized for the, com the group that we have. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand what you're trying to say with enrollment, but it's yeah. not always a one-to-one. -one, like, Correct. Yeah. You know, if we keep the same amount of kids, we don't need to expand. Yeah. If we're going to bring it up to date yeah. to codes and, and the expectations of where yeah. schools are going to be, um, a lot of things yeah. are undersized. Yeah, I, I think uh, my point is if you have the enrollment numbers broken out, I think it's going to even gonna clear to up a yeah. number of questions that people are going to have. Yeah. I mean, it's going to help. Yeah. yeah, understood. Yeah. All right, um, I think that's – I think we covered everything. Uh, yeah. Truly appreciate your time you've spent with us and shared that knowledge. And Peter, your your time with us too, for a number of years. Well, Welcome I'm still great. on, so I, yeah. I mean that. I know. I mean, call her. Yeah. You know, email. But, but, if if, if it's a history question, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I'm on. I'm I'm I'm, I'm helping her. Okay. I'm helping them. So, if you want to email and say, hey, what 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 was going on here or whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll probably be at most of the. I'll probably be at the the big budget meeting when we do personnel and. Okay. You know, I'll probably show up be up at that meeting. All right. All right. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, liaison reports. Uh, first one, Patrick. Uh, so I emailed you today. Yep. Um, I met with uh, the chief on Monday, the twentieth, um, a few days ago. Uh, he says uh, is expecting a surplus of one hundred and fifty to two hundred k. Uh, obviously, there's only a couple weeks left here, um, so that was. He still gave me a range, but he's pretty solid on the number being about 180, I believe. Um, he says that he's down seven officers going into this new fiscal year, and he's gonna. He's got two coming in August, two new hires in August, and another vacancy announcement that he'll put out in September. I don't think they plan on filling all seven of those positions. They'll probably fill just four. Mm -hmm. um, He's got uh, a few retirements coming up projected over the next year, but, you know, so he'll, he'll probably continue to be down a little bit as far as officers go. Uh, a lot of OT this year, mostly because of COVID, uh, some for backfilling of, of staffing. Uh, he said since July 1st of 21, seven officers left the department and 10 were hired. So, and that obviously we're still down seven officers now, but... Um, wow. that's what it's been going on. And what else did he say? He mentioned again, uh, the building maintenance and repair budget item. Uh, it's budgeted at 18, $18,700. It usually comes in over $75,000. So that's an area of the next budget that we're going to do that he wants to, um, see improved. Um, as far as management services and IT, that's the other area that's low. It's budgeted for 30 and it, it will wind up about 80 this year. Um, so those are his two big areas that are kind of on the radar for us that are going to come in as higher numbers. Okay. That being said, he's still 180K under. Correct. Um, yeah. But he needs that cushion there for overtime for mm -hmm. unforeseen circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, good. Uh, John. Tim's got something. Yep. yep. Did he mention anything about the fleet? I remember there was some time one time when we were having trouble with some of the vehicles with the recall and everything like that. So did he said anything where they are with that. We talked about they that started last, working on that. That was last month. Yeah. Um, he they just got a new lease. Yeah. So they do a three year lease, mm -hmm. and um, they had there was a higher cost in this year's budget in order to get the rate that they needed on the new lease. So there was mm -hmm. an upfront cost of I forget what it was sixty thousand dollars or something like that, and and they have actually I have it here. Hold on. Stand by. Um, maybe I have it here. Yes. Um, well, at any rate, they started the new lease this year, so um, they're good for three years. The maintenance of the fleet is seems to be well managed now, as opposed to how it was necessarily handled in the past. Now that it's a three-year lease. All of the fleet gets replaced every three years. So yeah, the third year there's a little bit more maintenance costs because some of those vehicles are a little older. They do a good job trying to rotate the vehicles, 
so that not all the miles are getting put yeah. on the same vehicles from day one of that lease. Um, but that system seems to be working well now. Mm -hmm. Do you say they average about 100,000 miles by that third year? I think it varies a bit. I would expect that the patrol vehicles that are on the street 24 hours a day, their mileage is going to be significantly higher. Then that's offset by, you know, um, your detective vehicles and your administrative vehicles. And it's not a super easy process to take a detective vehicle, an unmarked, and now make that a marked car and switch it out with one of the marked cars and take that off the road and give that to a detective because you got to go through the process of outfitting that vehicle for patrol and then obviously taking all the decals and stuff off of it for uh, for a detective. So he does do some of that to keep the mileage down. But So I think you have some vehicles with much higher mileage. I would expect way more than 100,000 miles yeah, and, and some with not nearly as much. Mm -hmm. okay. I can get more details on that if I you want to. Yep. All right, uh, fire department, Jonathan. Yes, I um, I also sent my um, report to you, Steve. Yep. Please note, though, that I said I talked to Chief O'Brien on June 19th, which was Sunday. That's not true. It was Monday the 20th. <laughs> so, thank you, Patrick. Um, so he assured me that they're, by June 30th they will uh, they will not have overspent their budget. They will be in the black. And um, I know Chief O'Brien. I've now been working with him for, I think, three years as the liaison. And um, he runs his fire department budget like we run our household budget. Mm -hmm. If you don't have it, you don't spend it. Um, and it's all based on uh, needs, not wants. I think similar to the police department, fire department is currently down eight positions, primarily due to retirements. Um, he has seven new um, employees starting on July 25th. One is already a paramedic, so can hit the ground running. Two have the training but need to pass the test to become paramedics. One is... Um, has none of the background and will attend re recruit school, which goes from August through October. And when that individual comes out of recruit school, they'll have firefighter two and the hazmat certifications. And two others who are joining already have firefighter one, but we need to find them a firefighter two course. And the way the state is set up, you can't just send them to the academy for a firefighter two course. They're spread all around the state and you have to find them. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But we're working to fill the positions. Uh, the chief says the budget is sustainable as is. It's a workable budget, and he's so used to working with it, and I have a comment about this, um, that he's covering the needs of the department. I asked him, though, I said, what are, what are, th what are your one, two, three priority areas for, for budget? He said the first is um, what he calls his safety line, which now includes turnout gear. And this line has been at $30,000 since 2010, when turnout gear was far less expensive. It's now $7,500 a set, and every member needs two sets. And it's not interchangeable. You can't just buy a fire coat and let everybody share it. You get your own custom fit turnout gear for personal protective equipment. So you can do the math. They're hiring eight people at 7,500 7, per set they need, so 15,000 per person. Yeah. Um, the second one is fleet maintenance, which seems to be a recurring therm that recurring theme in town. Um, he said our fleet is worth $10 million and the annual maintenance budget is 85,000. And then station maintenance. Uh, I think it's similar to what Peter was saying about the schools. Some of the construction that was done at the time, it's just, it needs work now. Some of the, and I think especially, um, whatever the, I call it the South Station, is that Station mm -hmm. 2, I think? Anyway, that needs some work. Um, Still awaiting word on three pending grants. I thought we might have heard by today when I talked to him on Monday, he said it was imminent, the SAFER grant, which is for five firefighter positions, and then a assistance to firefighters grant for $160,000 for equipment for ambulances, including lifting systems and stretchers, and then a New Hampshire GOFER grant for 50,000 for ambulance equipment. And we're quite confident we're going to get all of those, certainly fingers crossed. And I applaud the department, they're continually searching for grant opportunities and then Great. seeking those grants. A general comment though, in, in my discussion with the chief, and I think Patrick's with, uh, with the police chief, we're finding ways to cover expenses in the budget, but therefore the budget is not accurate. And the budget is supposed, in my opinion, is supposed to be a tool for planning. Mm -hmm. So when we're budgeting $30,000 in the safety line, and we're never gonna have to spend far more than that, can we somehow work 
and encourage the to adjust the line items. Yeah. To, to make Correct. the line items more accurately reflect the actual expenses. I know the money's being covered from somewhere, but yeah, they need to do an updated budget. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a common theme amount amongst yeah, like all here. the departments. Yeah, yeah. 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 and it's not criticism. I mean, I respect them. They're they're bringing their budgets in under the maximum as they're required to mm. do. Yeah. And the essentials are getting done, but then the budget is less of a tool. Yeah. yeah, they're shifting things between their sections. So yeah. the town just did something like that, didn't Justin? Just correct yeah. and re right size. Re right size. Yep. Stuff. That's what they call. Yep. Maybe we can ask them if they can do that with the other departments. Who's responsible for that anyway? Justin. Is it Justin. I think it's the whole finance department. Finance department. Yep. They're supposed to lead it and spearhead it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Maybe we can ask them. Yeah, but that's the kind of thing we're talking about. About. We don't see the process improvements. We don't see the Correct. good news. Yeah. Whereas if their line item for whatever ambulance gear said what they actually need and then said, oh, we got a $50,000 grant yeah. uh, to take off of that number and this is the resulting number, at least we would see that original number and so would the public. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm just worried we're going to get their budget and it's going to be under, but you're going to see PPE, 50000 over. Such and such, twenty thousand over. This much, seventy thousand under. This much, one hundred twenty over. And it's like, why are these so out of whack? Well, we don't want to go to. We, yeah. They have a bottom line budget, and and we we want them to have that so they can use the money with it. That was one of the right. negatives. And that's I saw. fine, but I'm just saying they don't categorize correctly. In other words, in other words, this category is is like stated right now, like you said, at thirty thousand dollars. Maybe it needs to be one hundred twenty thousand. And this one at 150 really needs to be 65. Mm -hmm. You know, it just needs to be right sized for what he's actually spending in those things. Agreed. You know, so. Yep. It just generates questions that are not necessary. Exactly. Yep. All right. Uh, good. Thank you, Jonathan. And Jen, DPW? Um, yeah, so I sent Dave an email earlier this week. Um, and he, I just, you know, outlined a couple of questions. I just said, are you guys on track to meet um, the budget? And he said, they are still on track. Um, he did say that they want to be cautious moving forward into fiscal 23 um, because they've already seen a large increase um, in prices for the materials, salt, gravel, loom, etc. Um, so they're going to keep an eye on that. And then as far as I asked him about fiscal year 24, the budget that we're going to be working on, and he said that they will start that budget process um, officially starts for them in the fall of this year. So okay. he hasn't quite gotten there yet. All right, good. Thank you. CIP, uh, I did attend the kickoff meeting on the 13th of this month. Uh, I was appointed the chair, and Bob Slater was appointed vice chair of the CIP committee. Uh, the project submissions for the CIP uh, program, and for those that are going to be looked at, are due July 1st. Uh, Monday on July 25th is when uh, we'll look at the project presentation. So if someone has a, a project that's mo more than a million dollars, they, they, we recommend that they deliver a presentation for that project. Uh, and then on August 1st is when we start reviewing them and scoring those projects. Those are the upcoming meetings for the CIP uh, program. Those will be, on, I'll have those in the minutes. I see those Perfect. dates. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to uh, Ron for the town council. Absolutely. So we've had two meetings since our last meeting. Um, the first meeting, major the budget related issues basically was the London Dairy Commercial and Industrial Tax Incentive Program. Um, it was revised. So that it, anything over fifteen million dollars now would qualify. There was a lot of tension at the meeting about this project, um, so there was a lot of discussion about. Sorry, anything uh, over how much? Fifteen, 15 million. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so these numbers were adjusted by Mike Malaguti to make kind of some adjustments to what people were concerned about. Um, one of the councilors um, invoked council privilege, so it was moved to the next meeting. So at the next meeting, which was this Monday, June 20th, um, there was more discussion about it. Um, Mike Malaguti brought some examples of some other towns that have done this tax incentive. Um, this tax incentive is to try to find new ways to generate revenue, ways to add revenue to the tax, to the town and to the taxpayers to save them money. 
17 towns currently participate in a program similar to this. So the end result, after some lengthy discussion at Monday's meeting, it did pass. Um, so what basically happens now is if a company wants to take advantage of this program, they have to come into the town council, present in front of the town council what they can do for the town, and then the town council has to vote to approve it. So it's not a locked-in program that anybody can get. They still have to get approval from the town okay. council. Uh, the second thing that was started at this council meeting was an elderly tax exemption. Um, because of three meetings prior, the um, military had got an approved discount. Um, some of the seniors in town said that they would like a discount also. So the it was talked about at the meeting. Um, basically, due to the number of elderly we have in town, it could be over a million dollars. So it was postponed to another meeting, but it may be a warrant article is needed okay. um, if this decides to be enacted. We may have to have all the voters in town vote on this due to the large um, expense that this would cause to the budget. Okay. And the uh, two other things that were discussed, the abatements, 38 of the 60 uh, abatements were approved. That was a few town councils ago where some people were upset about their tax rates. Um, so they did work that out. And then water infrastructure is the number one topic on the town's list right now. Um, as far as how much it's going to cost, what they're going to do. So they are have a company looking at it to see how much it's going to cost and mm -hmm. if they should do sewer at the same time and how far they can go with the money they have and what kind of grants they can get. Okay. That's it. Steve Manning? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, do you have the list of just briefly the top four strategy areas that um, the town's going to be working on? Water was number one. I think Yep. Mike Malgudi presented the other three that are on the... He did. I can put those in the minutes for you. Water, um, DPW. DPW was one of them. Economic development. Yep. Um, yep. And the DPW one was more or less updating their facilities. Correct. Um, yep. A lot due to the safety also. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so again, one, two, and three. One was water infrastructure. Number two, DPW facility. Number three, economic development, which had a number of subgroups. Is that what you want to hear? Yeah. Jonathan. Yep. Thank you. Uh, past construction. And rehabilitation tax exemption. Uh, no, B was uh, South London area sewer capacity, and C was widen Pimping Grill, Pimping Grill Road. Pimping Grill Road. Yeah. 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 Road yeah. By yeah. The airport. Okay. Yeah. And then D review and improve the planning board site plan and subdivision regulations. Right. Oh, there's actually a number four: mm. improve standardization and financial oversight. Mm. Okay. Curious why they widen Pimping Grill Road. I know. Yeah. It's just. It has it's room to do that, but it's like I mean, right. it's. I drive it, and I don't. It's never that crowded. To, <laughs> so maybe something would. I think it's to. If I recall from watching the meeting. Have a lane. I think they said it's needed for when we complete build out of that area. Oh, it yeah. will definitely need to be done before it gets done. But I'm like, it's it's not. It's so far from build out right now. Why would you build out the road before it's? Mm. That's just more road we gotta take care of and it's going to deteriorate faster while nobody's driving on it so why put the extra lane in it you know of course maybe 10 years from now concrete costs a lot more I don't know. yeah yeah so. all right uh, joseph is not here uh, tim i was secondary. going to bring it but i didn't bring my notes okay because usually joe will call me if he's not <laughs> going to be here so. all right that's okay no, no updates um that's it so that's it for the uh, liaison reports. Um, no one here from the town for public, so no uh, public comment. And then I have uh, the meeting schedule, so July 28th. Um, do we want to have a meeting on July 28th? Well, what is the difference between July and August? Because is August next to old home days, or is it not? It's right after school starts. I don't know where that falls in that time frame. So we don't sometimes have we a meeting August. in August because of the school board tours. Okay. Yeah. So do we have anything we need to cover in July? See, that's. Do I have to cancel that now? I mean, in no. two weeks? Well, okay. We don't. You gotta, yeah, I think it's. You got to do a two weeks I'm notice in the papers to let the public know there's not going to be a meeting or something like that. Uh, I don't. Or something like that. Think so. No. I don't think so. 
there was some notice that we were always told before we can cancel a meeting to take it to town. So Kirby had a chance to put something out saying there is no meeting. I don't know how many days it was. Could be a week. It was, but I remember they told us we had to give them so many days. Okay, yeah. I'll fi I can find out from Kirby. Yeah, I'd ask Kirby. I mean, I, I, I'm fine if you guys want to cancel it. I just want to make sure. I, I, I don't want to have meetings that don't add value. So it's, it's I don't want a meeting that adds value. Well, there are several things that may occur between now and July 20th. Exactly. School leadership exactly. is changing. Yeah. Um, you've got those priorities. You've got your CIP. Well, CIP starts after that, I guess. Yeah. The, well, well, we'll have the... We'll have the uh, it starts a couple days after. Yeah. July so I 20th. recommend we wait at least two weeks to the, make the determination. Yeah, I, I agree with that, too. Yep. Okay. Can I ask a question about the bonds? So... You know, we're looking at all these potential projects for the school school district. We have some potential town projects as well, like big ticket items coming down the road. I remember there was a list of what bonds were coming off soon, mm -hmm. that there was going to be several items that would save the town money because bonds were coming off. Roughly three of them. Do we know what those are? Can you refresh my memory? One is the high school. Uh, you know what? I probably should be because I, I don't remember for sure, but I remember it was three of them total, is one point two million dollars over the next seven years. Okay. So there's like six hundred thousand coming off, eight hundred thousand coming off, and three hundred thousand coming off, something like that. So when when he talks about when Peter talks about um, what Salem did, where they took a bond for two hundred eighty million dollars and did all all that work that needed to be done. I know that wasn't necessarily the best implementation of it, but when you look at the numbers in this in this master plan, you're talking three hundred million dollars worth of work, if my if my rough calculations were correct, uh, plus whatever we need to do for the town. What kind of bond would that be if we took a three hundred million dollar bond to do what the schools needed to be done? I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just curious how that compares to what's coming off. Uh, let, me, let me just uh, comment on on the school facility. This whole master plan that was put out there, uh, just because they have numbers out there, don't mean anything. Yeah, it, these numbers. It doesn't mean they're going to do all the work right now. It could it, it could be done in phases. We have it, it was just presented. Um, okay. It, it could just be in phases. Uh, it, they might want to focus on the internal first. Let's get the internal structure. Make sure everything's good and solid. That we have the the education part of it locked down and solid before we start expanding and making changes. I mean, yeah, I'm just it, it, might, it might start with that first. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's why I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, on what the numbers are. Um, but I think what Peter outlined, he outlined three areas. I think that's going to be the focus right now, those three schools. And did these the bonds areas. coming off free up that kind of budget money or no? No. Not. Not, not even close. Capacity. No. Not to mention they don't even talk in the admin building if there's a problem with that and we have to get out of that lease. Right. We need to sell the building we have to get out of it. we got a bigger problem. Yeah. So. All right. We have gone through the agenda. Um, looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion Second. adjourned. Second. Okay. Ron. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.